Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to Can't Win Them All, a World of Tanks video series where you've just tried to do absolutely everything that you think that you could have done, and you haven't been able to come through with the all-important victory. These videos are generally where I'm talking through what I maybe could have done better in my games, what and specific little moments in the battle that really could have been costly. So I'm playing in my tier 9 Czechoslovakian medium tank, my Škoda T50, and this is what this tank is all about. One. Two. Three. Gosh, took off 61% of that Panther 88 health. That's a medium tank. There's only one tier below me. He's not going to be having a very nice battle from here on. This vehicle, um, click through up here or use the more info icon in the top right hand corner of your screen if you have no idea about it because I have discussed this vehicle and also the entirety of the new Czechoslovakian branch inside that video. But this vehicle is just an assassin. Look at this LTTB. Good night, sweetheart. Now, I took a shot from the, the Panther 88, and so I go up and try and give him my third round from the magazine. Unable to do so. Let's see where that round actually hit our tank. Can't quite make it out. Oh, well. Let's not focus on that. Basically, this vehicle, its armor is it's okay. It, it's not like, for example, an AMX CDC, where everything that hits your tank is going to go in. You do have a chance to be able to ricochet some guns, especially when they've got about 175 millimeters of penetration when you're engaging tier 7 and tier 8 opponents, but you should never really try to rely on your armor with this vehicle. And it's also a very big, fat medium tank. I liken it a lot to uh, a Lorraine, the tier 9 French uh, medium tank, which also has a magazine as well. Now, the speciality of this tank is dishing out little bursts of three 320 alpha damage rounds which have got good penetration, as you would expect on a tier 9 medium tank. And so that means when you get hit for 278 from a Tiger II, you can do up to 960 average damage to him. Of course, you can roll above 1,000, or as an example there, we roll below 900. With two, well, every single one of our rounds rolling low there, only able to do 892 to him. But I say only 892. And this is what this tank just does. If it finds a vehicle out in the open like that, it just punishes them. 984 damage done there to the Ferdinand. Now, I'm in, a, I'm in a fairly nice matchup here. There are a few skilled players on the enemy team that I'm going to watch out for. We put some good rounds there into the Ferdinand. So what I'm doing right now is obviously assaulting on, on Siegfried Line. Now, to be able to assault on Siegfried Line, I really feel like this northern area of the map is where you want to try and break through with your medium tanks. By policing this ridge line, you can shoot into the town, you can stop people from advancing along this D-line here. And you can also, if your friends do, light up some targets, get some shots into tank destroyers that like to, to, uh, like to camp at the back. You've got to be very careful on this ridgeline, though, for a few reasons. One, if the tank destroyers do catch you out, then you're going to be in a, a hell of a lot of trouble. And two, as well, as we can see, you can get shot from inside the town uh, by the, the Panther 88 earlier if you're not careful and aware of your surroundings. So... I felt like my team were going to melt right now, and so that's why you see me being aggressive. Now, what caused this, this in motion? What, what made me decide that it's the right time to push now? Well, that's because the TVP BTU, who was spotted here, just got spotted in the town. So what that means is now that the tank destroyers are left behind without medium tank support. When you're playing a vehicle such as the Škoda T50, you really do not want to get caught by medium tanks when you're reloading. Oh, it's just so satisfying taking out that tier 9 self-propelled gun with the two remaining shells after putting one into the Ferdinand as well. I am in love with this tank right now. We've done 4,200 damage and picked up three kills in four minutes. But back to what I was talking about. When I saw that the TVP VTU was here, that means that the Ferdinand can be isolated and that's what you want to do with your medium tanks and especially your autoloaders. You want to try and isolate opponents one by one by one and take them out. Try and look for a shot on the Tiger 2 there. And instead, go put one into the uh, the Panther 88. We finish him off. We get hit by the VTU in the side of the turret there. Not very good. But I'm far more worried about this Yag, ti this Yag Tiger that's sitting in front of me. I've got a KV-4 supporting me from behind. But those two tracking shots, maybe I should have spread them out a little bit longer. Maybe I should have kept him tracked for a little longer. As you can see that my KV-4 is doing a great job of taking huge chunks out of that Tier 9 German tank destroyer. So we're under a lot of pressure here. Unfortunately, I took a few soft hits, you might say, from the TVP VTU and the Panther 88. So that means that we're down to 629 hit points. We put one into the VTU, sorry, the TVP VTU, 
And um, this is where this gun gets a little awkward. It's not as good as single shot guns. I'd far rather be playing a T-54 in this situation. Because having that autoloader just isn't an advantage. We've only got one remaining. We put a round into the TVP VTU. And now we're reloading. He manages to kill the KV-4 behind us. And there's only one way out of this situation. I may be reloading, but you're on a low amount of hit points, buddy. We ram him to death. We pick up the top gun. And oh, an absolute disaster. There's a 5100 behind us. Bounce, 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 bounce. No. He didn't bounce. That 100mm six-round autoloader saying hello to my 100mm three-round autoloader. And the 5100 comes out on top. So this was an absolutely crazy round for the latest tier 9 tank in World of Tanks. In just over five minutes, well, five and a half minutes to be exact, we were able to do 6,000 damage and pick up six kills. And if only we'd maybe bounced a shot from that 5100, we would have probably been able to kill him and then stood a chance of finishing this game off with my team. Unfortunately, after we fall, my team wilts away. But of course, when you're attacking on Siegfried line, you are at a disadvantage. The only thing I really did wrong this game was maybe the soft shots that I took from the Panther 88 while I was aiming at the Tiger, and also getting shot in the side of the turret by the VTU while I was trying to kill the Yag Tiger. Apart from that, I just put my tank in the right situation, read how the, the map was going to develop, and took opportunities when medium tanks left tank destroyers by themselves in a very vulnerable situation. But that's quite enough about this replay, let's get stuck into some more action. And so now we're joining the Skoda T-50 on Tundra. We're in not as nice of a matchup as we were on Siegfried line, and I've already taken a big meaty shot from my opponents and not been able to deal any damage for it. So we're down by a third of our hit points. But this is going to be a very interesting engagement. Did you see the T-54E1, that at tier 9 American medium tank autoloader that's sneaking his way through the front? And so this is a very interesting engagement. This is this is the dynamics. Uh, the dynamics of this fight uh, are very clever. So he's got a four-round magazine with 390 alpha damage, which, if he rolls slightly high, can kill me in a single clip. And considering that I've lost my hit points, he is going to be able to kill me in a magazine if he connects all of his shots. However, my reload is much, much better than his. So if I can keep kiting him and keep harassing him, then I can I can control the engagement. Luckily for us, we managed to put two rounds into his turret each time, unfortunately bouncing one of the shells, and so that means that I can't kill him. But I'm faster than this vehicle, so I can just use this rock to kite him, and I would have been able to reload and then be able to take him out. That bounce was really catastrophic. You need to be thinking when you're playing your autoloaders, how, how many shots do I need to penetrate to be able to take my opponent out before I have to reload? Now, maybe it's not so important in a tank such as the, the Skoda T-50 because it has a very fast reload as it only has a three-round magazine. Quite low alpha damage on the shells, but if you're in a bat chat, you need to be a lot more careful with your planning. So our first shot takes his tracks off. Second one, third one, we shut him down. Great result there. That bat chat was on five kills. He just took out our artillery. Luckily for us, we avoided a shell from the T-110E5 from behind, and we kept the bat chat still enough for the T-57 Heavy, that Tier 10 American autoloader heavy tank, to be able to finish off the bat chat. So now I need to get out of that situation. There's an E-75 and even worse, a T-110E5 um, basically coming towards me. You do not want to fight T-125s frontally in this vehicle. That is the way to lose. You've got 240, what, 248 millimeters of penetration in this tank. And so that is not really enough to reliably contest the front of the T-125. We put one round into the SDA-1 and miss the other two rounds. This tank can end up being very expensive. The rounds, I believe, cost maybe 1,000, maybe 1,200 credits per shot. Uh, maybe 1,100. Anyway, that's just splitting hairs, right? So every time you unload the magazine, which is very quick in this vehicle, you're going to be paying 3,500 credits. So if you only manage to connect one, it's a very fast way to, uh, to waste credits in the game. So now I'm going to fall back into a position that I think is, is, is the strongest option for me. These bushes that I can use here will allow me to shoot at the T-125 without getting shot at myself. When I go forwards, I can see through the bushes. I spot T-125 for my team. And then I can shoot through the bushes as long as they're still not transparent and I won't get spotted by him. I pull back just to, because uh, I get a little bit worried that I might get spotted. But as we can clearly see, I'm not getting spotted. As long as I cannot see through the bushes, the enemies shouldn't be able to see me. Very lucky that that round went into the E-75. 
And now I'm going to load some heat rounds. The heat rounds in this tank have got 310 millimeters of penetration. But remember, heat doesn't do very well against spaced armor. But when you're engaging a T-125, I thought I was going to get to shoot him in the front. But now look, he's just given his us his side armor. The first one goes in. Oh, the second one doesn't. And the third one whiffs into the terrain. Absolute disaster there. That is a very fast way to lose a lot of credits, I believe. These rounds must cost about four or five thousand. So that was about that was about twelve to fifteen thousand credits worth of ammunition that I used yet yeah, there. If I keep doing that, uh, that is not going to be a way to uh, keep my bank balance in check. But in this kind of a situation where you're outnumbered and you're playing against probably one of the most powerful tier ten tanks in the game at the moment, I feel like those premium rounds might level the playing field just a little bit. So I see that the T-57 Heavy is under a lot of pressure, and I need to be aggressive. It's three versus six. We need to kill some tanks. First one doesn't go in. Oh god, second one does. Thank goodness. I love how quickly this tank unloads its magazine. Means that even if you uh, do have a bit of a nightmare with one of your shells not going exactly where you want to, that means you can still take out your opponents. But this is a very interesting engagement. He's got 752 hit points. That means that I need to connect all three shells to be able to take out this tier 9 German heavy tank. If I miss one, it'll be a disaster. Oh god. And so this is a very awkward situation for this tank. I was just hoping for a fire as I shot at the back of his tank there. Luckily, he's turning his turret around and he's not going to be able to engage us. And I decide to get out by going over the bridge. But I realize, oh man, those tank destroyers are going to get me. But I don't have a choice. Ouch! The artillery is actually the uh, the enemy that punishes me. I get hit by the Lorraine 15551. But I see this as an opportunity. I think that perhaps the tank destroyers are camping out the E75 um, on my team. And because we know where the enemy E75 is, that means I can go hunting. And as we can see, this vehicle, it's, it's not the fastest of medium tanks, but it's certainly not slow. And this is just lovely. I love this tank for hoovering up artilleries. Oh, yes. And then the fast reload means that if the Lorraine 15551 was to appear, then we'd be able to take him out as well. It's just so thirsty. This tank is all about predicting where your opponents will be and punishing them with short reloads of your magazine that, that still don't have that high of a, of a magazine potential. I don't even really need to worry about missing that shell. I, I can take one chancy shell because I know that I only need two to be able to take him out. Even if I was to miss the others, then I could probably still ram him to death. Unfortunately, the E75 on my team finally gets taken out by those DDs. And I feel like I want to go and try and punish the E75 right now. Looking at this game, uh, if I, I think I'm quite worried about getting shot from the hill by the tank destroyers. Personally, if I was playing right now, Considering that both of the tank destroyers were just spotted up on the hill, I would be quite aggressive trying to get vision on this E-75 here. I'd probably try and make my way towards this location, see if I can spot anywhere where the E-75 will be. But remember, the closer that I get to the hill, now with, I'm within the render range of the hill, that means that the tank destroyers can easily hit me. And now I'm getting within the spotting range of the hill. And if the tank destroyers are using a camouflage net and binoculars, it's very likely they're going to be able to see me. Looks like I realized this, so I was obviously thinking in the same kind of way as I would think now, quite clearly. Um, I, I, I get away from the hill because otherwise I, I can't risk to get spotted by sneaky tank destroyers. My view range might be quite good considering I am using coated optics on this tank. I have a skilled crew and I'm also using a premium consumable buchte, which will increase my view range by... Uh, it's probably not going to be 10%, it's probably going to be 5%. Because when you think about it, vents actually increase your view range by about 2.6%, I believe. So I think you get about half the impact actually in, uh, in the, the equation. I realize it increases my crew skills by 10%, but that's not necessarily going to mean that I reload 10% faster, as an example. Otherwise, everyone would be using these, right? Um, so right now, I'm just trying to get vision on the E75, and I'm pretty sure where he is now. I'm fairly sure the tank destroyers are still sitting up on the hill. So I get into position to try and scout out the E-75. I thought right now that the tank destroyers will be trundling their way down to try and support the E-75 inside the cap circle. So I'm going to try and punish him. Can we find the shot? Can we find the shot? We get spotted. Oh, absolute disaster. But we managed to finish him off. Now this is where I make a mistake. Tunnel vision, tunnel vision. I used this rock to avoid getting shot from the hill. And I didn't even see that there was a fully spotted Borsig sitting there. 
He hits me with his 150 millimeter, and I just didn't even think that the tank destroyers could be here. I managed to bounce the SU-12254, and I start to panic, thinking, can I finish these guys off with my shot? I have to hit them twice. Oh god, I'm gonna have to get out of here. They're not having any mercy after me. Oh dear, didn't look at the terrain. Ouch, that was a bit of an awkward situation at the end of the game. So well played to these tank destroyers for taking me out at the end of the game, and bad play to me for not even considering that they could possibly be here. This was a series of unfortunate events. I thought that it was the E-75 that spotted me as we managed to take him out, and so that's why my sixth sense went off. It looks like actually that there was a boar sig that was probably sitting in a bush that managed to spot me, and I was far too focused on hiding behind this rock to avoid getting shot from the hill where I thought their tank destroyers would be camping. I honestly cannot believe that their tank destroyers must have made their way around here. We somehow managed to avoid spotting each other and then snuck up behind me and then finished me off making me a horrible, tasty, um, toasted book tea snack <laughs> near their base. So oh well, I wasn't quite able to carry this game. In retrospect, my driving at the end was a little poor as well. I could have probably used this little gap down here to snake my way along here and down and out, and then this rock slash the train would have been able to cover me. And I, I don't really think I've ever been in this position before, but I kind of gifted him a very nice shot. I'm sitting on this mound like some kind of a king. Um, looks like he dethroned me, so well played to him. Nevertheless, this was still a great game for the Skoda T50, which is certainly, in my opinion, in the hands of an experienced and capable player, one of the best tanks tier for tier in the game at the moment. It truly is a monster. But the amount of awareness and knowledge of your opponent's capabilities, as well as your own capabilities and skill in making precision shots, really does mean this tank has one of the highest skill caps, I feel, in World of Tanks as well. And so just because you see horrible unicorns running around tearing the game apart with these new autoloaders, the Czechoslovakian Tier 9 and Tier 10, doesn't mean that everyone should try and get one. You're probably best to start with a vehicle such as possibly the T-54E1 that might ease you into the way of the autoloaders first. But if you guys are an advanced player and you're very comfortable with your autoloaders and your fast medium tanks, look no further than the Tier 9 and Tier 10 Czechoslovakian medium tanks. They truly are beasts. Anyway. Let's take a quick look at the post-game stats. So our first defeat on Siegfried Line was a high caliber medal and a top gun, and that's for the 6,078 damage we were able to do in 5 minutes and 22 seconds. This tank is absolutely monstrous. We hit 20 out of 20, and 20 of those penetrated. But our armor didn't hold up very well. We were only able to block 240 damage. We still made 40,000 credits profit this game, as you would expect when every single one of your rounds that you fire hits and penetrates the target. We still got a monstrous amount of experience, more base experience, even 20% more base experience than anyone on the enemy team was able to get for our defeat. Next up on Tundra, we picked up another high caliber medal for 5,430 damage done with our four kills, 1,373 base experience points, which is massively higher what anyone, even on the winning team, was able to get. This time we actually lost credits this game because of the amount of heat that I fired under that pressure situation against the T125, but in retrospect, APCR would have absolutely sufficed against the side of his armor. But I guess that one balances out the other, and as long as you don't always have games like that, you're still going to be in a profit. All in all, this tank is a complete monster, and I look forward to playing it every single time I live stream. And talking about live streaming, tonight I'm going to be doing something extra special on my live stream. It's going to be a giveaway to celebrate 2016 on twitch.tv forward slash quickiebaby from 5 o'clock in the UK, that's 6 o'clock in the rest of Europe, and that's midday Eastern Standard time in the old US of A, where you guys stand a chance to win the Type 59, a Type 62, and also three Cromwell Berlins. So if you miss them during the sales, come along and you stand a chance to win the rarest and most sought after vehicles in the game. And so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a like down below. It really helps the channel out. And also let me know if you want to see this kind of commentary where I'm really talking through specifically what I'm thinking in my replays, even if the result wasn't spectacular, I end up getting killed myself. And if you want to see what the big brother of the Skoda T50, the TVP T50 slash 51 is capable of, then simply click through up here and you can go through to see an absolute monster round showcasing the full capabilities of the brand new tier 10 medium tank. And let me know in the comments down below what has your experience of the new Czechoslovakian medium tanks been? Do you feel like they're overpowered? Do you feel like they're underpowered? 
Have you been grinding up the line? How do you feel about it? Has it been going well for you? Are there any aspects that you really dislike and any aspects that you really do like? And hopefully see you guys on the live stream tonight. I'll be putting in a link in the description below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.